This portion of the video is to go over some special maneuvers. So these are some disease specific maneuvers that we don't do as a part of the general abdominal exam, but that we do when we are trying to rule in or out specific disease processes. So the first part of what we're gonna do is the um, evaluation for guarding and rebound tenderness. So guarding is going to be contraction of the abdominal muscles uh, um, against pain. It can be voluntary, uh, which can occur if your hand happens to be cold or the patient is ticklish, you'll feel the muscles contract. However, if there's significant peritoneal inflammation, then this guarding will be involuntary. When I go to press down on the abdomen, I will feel the firmness of the abdominal muscles and the patient won't be able to relax them. The way to be able to tell that this, is, um, that this palpation leading to guarding is actually involuntary is to do some relaxing maneuvers. So first, lift your hand there for a while so the patient gets used to the temperature. And you can also have the patient bend his legs. So you could bend your knees up for me. Both of them. Both of them, please. And that will again relax the abdominal muscles. If I press down and still feel the hardness of the muscle contraction, now we're looking at involuntary guarding. If you could relax your legs for me. The next we're gonna look at is rebound tenderness. Rebound tenderness is pain with release of the pressure. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press down on your abdomen and you let me know if it hurts more when I'm pushing in or when I'm pushing out, or when I'm letting go, excuse me. So I push in and let go quickly. Where was there more pain? In. In, okay. So that would be tenderness, but negative for rebound tenderness. So the next maneuvers I'm gonna talk about are some more disease specific maneuvers. Rebound tenderness and guarding is general peritoneal inflammation. It can be as a result of anything that leads to peritoneal irritation all the way to a frank peritonitis. We have some special maneuvers specific to, we'll start with appendicitis. So the first one is gonna be Rosfing's sign, which is a referred rebound tenderness. And it's specific for appendicitis. So the appendix is generally in the right lower quadrant if I do rebound tenderness by pushing down in the left lower quadrant, and I get rebound tenderness in the right associated with that, that is Rothsfing's sign. So again, I just push in and let go sharply and ask the patient where they felt more discomfort and where the discomfort was. A positive sign would be pain associated with rebound, but overly in the right as opposed to where I was palpating. Next one is gonna be McBurney's point. So that is again, specific point tenderness at the area of most commonly felt for the appendix. McPerny's point is found by finding the anterior iliac spine um, and the abdomen, excuse me, and the umbilicus and drawing an imaginary line between the two. Approximately two inches from the iliac spine or approximately a third of the way to the umbilicus on that imaginary line is McBurney's point. And I wanna press down in that location and see if I elicit any pain or tenderness at that location. So these next two maneuvers are also for appendicitis. The first one is psoas sign. What I'm gonna do is have the patient activate their psoas muscle, which will cause it to push up against the um, inflamed appendix and cause pain up in the abdomen. So in order to do that, I'm gonna put pressure on the patient's thigh, on the right leg, just above his knee, and ask him to try and lift his leg off the table, so flex your hip and while I push down, and then relax. So that there was a negative psoas sign because it didn't elicit any pain. If it elicited pain, that would have been a positive psoas sign. The next one is obturator sign. What we're gonna do is stretch that obturator muscle, and again, it'll rub up against the inflamed appendix. A positive sign would be eliciting pain. So this one, I'm gonna do the motions. So I'm gonna lift the patient's leg and do an external, excuse me, an internal rotation of the patient's hip. So I'm gonna turn the lower leg outwards for an internal rotation. If that was a negative sign because he had no pain. Positive would have been pain in the area of the right lower quadrant. So the next maneuver is actually for a different disease process, and this one is for um, acute cholecystitis or gallbladder inflammation. And this is Murphy's sign. So Murphy's sign is I'm pressing up against the area where the gallbladder is, I'm pressing in the area where I would normally do palpation of the liver. I ask the patient to take a deep breath. When the patient breathes in and lowers the liver up against my fingers, the inflamed gallbladder will hit my hand and will cause significant pain. Usually what happens then is, is then the patient abruptly stops breathing as a result of that pain that they're having. And that is a positive Murphy's sign. 
So to do the maneuver, I'm going to press my fingers up at approximately the area of the midclavicular line and ask the patient to take a deep breath and relax. So the patient didn't have any, he has no gallbladder inflammation, he had no pain, he breathed, breathed smoothly, so that was a negative Murphy sign. If when I did that exact same maneuver, he halted or complained of significant pain during the maneuver, that would have been a positive Murphy sign. So finally, I want to mention a few additional special maneuvers. The first one is an assessment for ascites. These are maneuvers are difficult to demonstrate on someone who doesn't actually have ascites, so I'm going to refer you back to the textbook for the details on how to do them. The first one is called shifting dullness, and finally, checking for a fluid wave. Last but not least, any patient who has significant abdominal pain or evidence of abdominal pathology may need both a rectal exam um, in both the male and female, and in the female, a pelvic exam to fully evaluate that complaint.